program event titled Creating an Exemplary Blackboard Program, Nursing Program. Heads are pleased to have you here and hope that this experience will benefit and support your institutional goals as well as your professional um, interest. The trend of distance edu education will continue to grow. This is not gonna go away. The demand of distance education is related to the technology advancement that we see, changes in our struggling economy, and changes in our overall society. We have students now in our classrooms that were born into a digital world. And I could assure you of that because of my son who's 18. He had a wonderful experience this weekend looking at a payphone. He never has seen a payphone. Technology tools are becoming the norm in individuals who are at seeking the most complex purpose and convenience in education. The purpose of this event is to highlight and share the expertise of the outstanding work of one of HEDS member institutions in New York, which is making the best out of technology to achieve student success on a nursing online course. The focus of this session is for the professors from Lehman to share their experience and best practices in designing a hybrid nursing program by taking us through the process in a nutshell. They will be sharing the pitfalls to avoid based on the Lehman College experience. They will also explain how this process can be extrapolated to other LMS besides Blackboard and the possibility that Lehman College can serve as a consultant or collaborator to any institution interested in implementing a similar technology program. HEAD would also like to recognize the collaboration and support of the Universidad del Este and La Escuela de Hospitalidad y Artes Culinarias, Jose A. Tony Santana, and the staff. Is that true bilingual? <laughs> <laughs> who made this event possible and has provided a live transmission as well. We also would like to work those participants that are watching through the live transmission through the internet. I leave you with these preliminary thoughts as I present to you our lecturers this morning who are the professors from one of the outstanding academic institutions from the HEADS Consortium, Lehman College. Professor Nurse and Cadet will be presenting simultaneously, so I will read both their bio so that you can have uh, an understanding of their background. At the end of their presentation, time will be set apart for a question and answer. Um, so I do encourage you that throughout their presentation, you take out a piece of paper, um, and if you're watching through the live transmission, write notes or questions so that we could really take advantage of this wonderful resource and, um, and tap into their knowledge and expertise. I will start with Professor Miriam Jean Cadet. She is a lecturer at Lehman College. She is currently teaching courses for the online RN to BSN nursing program and the MSN degree program nurse practitioner at Lehman College. She has over six years of continuous experience as a nurse educator. She is an adjunct faculty of the RN BSN online nursing degree program at Excelsior College School of Nursing. She has over 15 years of clinical nursing experience as a registered nurse and five years of clinical experience as a family nurse practitioner. Busy woman. She is board certified family nurse practitioner and practicing at a private outpatient primary care clinic in New York. Her scope of practice includes health promotion, disease prevention, diagnosis, management of health problems, beginning in childhood through the aging process. She worked as a critical care nurse at the State University of New York Health Science for 10 years. With her 15 years ex of experience in nursing, her professional career has included nurse educator, nurse practitioner, critical care, ICU, CCU, medical surgical, home care, leadership, and school health. She has covered everything. We're very safe today, if anyone should get sick. <laughs> um, where was I up to? Okay. She is a member of the National League of Nursing and American Academy of Nurse Practitioner Certification Program. Professor Cadet earned her associate degree in nursing um, from the Borough of Manhattan Community College. She earned her Bachelor's of Science and Master's of Science degree from the State University of New York uh, Science College of Nursing. 
Currently, she is pursuing her PhD in education with specialization in nursing at Capella University. Her dissertation project is focusing on online education, best practice developing and implementing online nursing courses. And our next uh, presenter today, Natasha Nurse, Professor Natasha Nurse, is a registered nurse with a background in neonatal nursing and grief counseling. She has a master's degree in nursing as a clinical nurse specialist with a concentration in high-risk mothers and infants. She has experience as a regional perinatal care coordinator and experiencing facilitating a parent bereavement support group for family experiencing a miscarriage, stillbirth, or neonatal death must be a special person to be able to do that. Ms. Nurse has a bachelor's and master's of science in nursing, a post-master's advanced certificate in grief counseling, and is also currently pursuing her PhD in nursing at the CUNY Graduate Center in New York. Ms. Nurse is a full-time faculty member at Lehman College, and that's in the Bronx, in the Department of Nursing, and serves on several committees in that role. Ms. Nurse has deep interest in online education, perinatal bereavement support, adolescent health and advocacy. Ms. Nurse is currently involved in research pertaining to her dissertation topic related to nursing care for women experiencing a stillbirth, as well as research related to adolescent food choices, social responsibility, and advocacy. They will have an hour and 15 minutes to present the participants um, watching the event through the internet can send their questions through info at heads.org and um, I ask you now to please turn your cell phones into silent mode try to reduce the movement in the room because we are being recorded um, and I hope you enjoy their presentation and help me welcome Professor Cadet and Professor Nurse. Thank you for that lovely introduction. Uh, now I feel like we have to live up to these <laughs> great expectations. Um, Professor Cadet and I are so excited to be here today and we thank you for welcoming us and inviting us to speak here today. Um, I'm going to bring the presentation to the first. So um, Brenda did a wonderful job of introducing us and this is just a slide that has our photos on it and our titles and we're both professors at Lehman College and that has been a wonderful experience for the both of us and through that, um, through working at Lehman we have the opportunity to be involved in this wonderful society so we're absolutely um, delighted to be here. So I'm just going to go over the goals and expectations that we have, the goals and objectives that we have for this presentation today. So the main purpose of our presentation is to be able to present to you best practices in online education. So we want to demonstrate how to design an exemplary online course. And just as a precursor to that, are most of the people in the room educators? Yes, educators? Oh, great. Do you guys have uh, experience teaching online courses? Wonderful, good. Just wanna have a good idea of who's in the room and how to focus this presentation. We wanna explain the purpose of interaction and collaboration for online learning, evaluate the appropriate assessment for online learning, and to explain the appropriate resources to support learners' needs in online um, education. So what is an exemplary online course? Uh, does anybody want to venture, venture an answer to what you think is an exemplary online course? Yeah. The next question will help us. So 
So which of the following is the most important element when creating an online course? So these are some very important elements when you're creating an online course. So the question that I've posed here is what do you think is the most important feature in an online course? The way that I'd ask you to answer this question is by using some technology. So this is something that we use, we use sometimes in a lecture course to get everybody to participate. So what I'll ask is, does everybody have a cell phone? Yes? And does everybody have um, texting capability on your cell phone? OK, great. So what I'm going to do is start a poll. I'm going to ask you to text your answer to a number that I'm going to give you now. ready to enter the number that I'm going to ask you to text your answer to, okay? Okay, so the number that we're going to text to is 1747-444-3548. I'm going to give the number again. 1747-444-3548. And the people who are watching via the internet are welcome to participate in this poll as well. Once you have that number in, you can text one of these codes into that number. So the question again is, what do you think is the most important element in an online course? Your choices are course design, how the course is designed. If you think that's the answer, you can text 245005. If you think the most important element is, oh, people are catching on pretty well. Uh, if you think the most important element is interaction and collaboration, you can text the code 245007. If you think the most important element is assessment, you can text 245008. If you think the most important element is learner support, you can text 245010. And if you think the most important elements are all of the above, which it seems about six people so far have responded to, you can text 245012. And you can see as people start to enter their answers, it'll show up here on the screen. This is an example of some of the technologies that we like to use to make sure everybody's engaged and everybody can see in real life time um, what, what everybody's answers are. So it seems that we have about 10 responses, 10 answers so far, and it looks like everybody thinks the answer is all of the above. And um, we'll see if, if your answer is correct as we go through this presentation. But thank you guys so much for participating. I'll go back to the presentation. This slide here gives us an example of um, some uh, the rubric that is designed by Blackboard. So Blackboard is the online um, learning management system that we use at Lehman College. There's many different learning management systems. Blackboard is just one example. It may not be the same ones that you use at your institution, but um, I'll give some examples of how you can incorporate most of these things in any learning management system. What Blackboard has done is they try to encourage all educators to create a course that is very easy for students to follow. So what they have done is they've created this exemplary program or exemplary online course program. And they give you uh, some, an outline of what is an exemplary course. They give you an idea of the, the specific elements that should be a part of an exemplary course. And this screenshot we took is an example from the rubric that they've given us. So they have different categories. If you submit your course to be um, evaluated as an online course, they tell you exactly what they consider an exemplary course. And then they tell you, 
okay, if it's not exemplary, maybe you've accomplished some of these uh, rubrics, some of these objectives, but it's not quite exemplary. Of course, we all want the exemplary category, right? So this was just an example to show you what Professor Cadet and I have based our, um, our presentation on by using this particular rubric from Blackboard. So creating an exemplary online course, this slide gives us an idea of all the elements that we'll be talking about today and the elements that are important in an online exemplary course. We have course design, which I'm going to speak to you about. We have interaction and collaboration, assessment and learner support, which are some elements that Professor Cadet will speak to us about this morning, just to give you an idea of how we, set, of how we have set out this presentation. So in order to present this online course um, presentation, we're going to be using, uh, as an example, a nursing course from Lehman College. This course is Nursing 300, and it is Nursing as a Human Science. It's one of the basic introductory courses in the nursing program. So what we've done is we've used this course in, as an example. We've put in all the elements that Blackboard says are exemplary, and I'm going to present to you how we created that course today and give you an idea of how you might implement some of these same things in your courses. So this is an example of the course in the Blackboard environment. Uh, the previous slide had just stated that it's a 15-week course. It's a course that is given to all undergraduate nurses, whether they're RNs already, trying to get their BSN, or whether they're just first-time nursing students without an RN license. So because it's an introductory course, and many of these students haven't taken courses at Lehman before, or maybe even haven't taken an online course, we want to make it extremely clear and very easy for students to follow. So what we do in this Blackboard environment is we have a welcome start here um, um, section on the, on the left side of the screen so that students, when they come into a Blackboard environment, if they've never taken a course online, at least they know exactly where to start. It's very, very simple. It says, welcome start here. On that page that says welcome start here, we have several elements. The first thing is a welcome, so welcome to this course. And the next thing is a video tour of Blackboard. That way this gives the student an idea of how to navigate the course right from the beginning. I also want to mention to you what I have typically started to do in my courses. About maybe three weeks before the courses start, I try to send out an email to the students and tell them, you're registered for this course. I just wanted to send you an email, let you know my name is Professor Nurse. I'm going to be your instructor for this course. I also try to give them the textbook that we'll be using for the course so they have it ahead of time. So some people, some students like to get a head start um, with getting their books because sometimes there's a delay. Also what I try to do one week before the course starts is send out another introductory email. This one is a little bit more lengthy and it's the same email that I put on my first week announcement in my Blackboard course. Again, it introduces myself as their instructor. It gives them information about the course. Some students are very anxious, especially in an online course. I let them know exactly what's expected of them. I let them know this is a three credit course, but you may be putting nine to 12 hours a week into this course because it's an online course. So I try to always prepare them. When Blackboard talks about course design, they try to make it so that students have no questions, no worries. They know exactly where to find everything. And that's why I send out these emails in advance. Thank you so much. I send out these emails in advance to let students know this is what's expected. It's sort of a way of saying, don't be worried. Don't be um, anxious. Um, the course will proceed in this way. It also shows the students that I'm interested and that I'm approachable. And if they have any questions, they can reach out to me without any problems. So back to our course design here. The important thing about this welcome, again, is to show the students that I'm approachable, I will be their instructor, and welcome them to this course. Then I made a video tour of Blackboard. Everybody doesn't have to do this. It's something that I found works very well. 
So what I do is I make a video of the Blackboard environment. I go through all of these tabs at the side that says home page, welcome, start here, announcement, instructor info. I go through each tab and I show them exactly what's found in those sections. I found that to be very helpful because sometimes students don't know where to go to find an assignment, to find their weekly um, readings. So I just do a quick, very, very brief overview of what's in each of these tabs. Now, Lehman College has, it has wonderful resources. One additional thing I found that they have is their own orientation to Blackboard. So what they do is they have an orientation to Blackboard that's available to any student in the school. So I've also put a link here in my Blackboard course to that as well. I have found that providing more information is better than providing less information. The main purpose of this slide is just to encourage people who teach online to have a similar tab like this that says, welcome, start here, so that there's no question to the student. When they open this page and they're like, okay, now what do I do? They've got a welcome start here, they know exactly where to start. So this is just another overview of what we'll be discussing again today. We'll talk about our goals and objectives. Um, the different the learning modules that are included in this Blackboard uh, course. We're going to talk about how to present content and how to use technology and learner engagement. So now I'm going to talk about content presentation. How do you present your content in an online course? Again, because many of our students haven't taken courses yet, because this is an introductory course, and many of them have not taken an online course before, we want to make it very easy to navigate, very, very um, user savvy. So in my weekly content section, I've made it very simple. I've laid it out week one through week 15. Each of these at the beginning of the course may not have uh, the content available for students to see because I've also found that students get very anxious when they can see everything from the beginning. When it's laid out, then they get overwhelmed like, oh my God, how am I going to do all of the things that this course asks of me? So what I found is I make each week available and the following week I also make available. So they have two weeks available to them in the beginning and then as it goes on, each week will be added. Blackboard is wonderful because I'm able to load everything that I need for the entire semester right from the beginning. And then they just have a little option that says hide content or make, uh, make content available on such and such a date. So I can set that up right from the beginning. That way I'm not overwhelming the students. They can't see it, but I'm not overwhelming myself. Everything is already there and set up to, to be available to the students when that date comes. So I have from week one, what I've included is the dates that week one occurs. Many, many professors don't typically do that and it's not really required. I've just found from being a, an online student myself, sometimes I forget which week I'm on, especially after a break, like say a Thanksgiving break or a, or a winter break or a spring break. When we come back to class, I don't remember which week number we're in. So I put the dates in right here on the, on the content page, and then I also put the topic that we'll be discussing that week. Again, you'll start to see this, um, this pattern of being user-friendly, making it so that students don't have as much questions and don't get confused. So we can see that the weekly content is available, weeks one through 15, the topics and the dates. This is something else that Blackboard has um, identified as being important and easy for students to follow. Now I'm gonna take you inside one of those weekly contents. So this is my week one. All of the weeks are set up the same way. Again, you want to make sure that it's very easy for students. So once you get into a pattern, you continue to follow that. Students find it very easy to follow. So the first thing that I have in the week is this introduction section. Again, introduce myself to the students because this is week one, and I let them know what we're going to be doing today. Let them know that I'm happy to have them here in this course, and we're going to have a great time. Also, something that I have done is that I end that introduction section with something like a quote, something that relates to the course, um, but that is also um, inspirational. 
I found that to, just to be a nice little tidbit. Again, it's not something that has to be there, but I find that anything that you can do to put your own touch on your course is very appreciated by your students because now they feel like this is not just some, something that's listed here, go through each page. It's got a special touch. You're showing yourself as this instructor, as a unique instructor to these students. The other thing that I have in the weekly content is the overview. What are we going to be talking about this week in the course? So the overview discusses exactly that. The next part is the objectives. Blackboard wants us to be very clear to students. What is your objective for this week? What are we trying to accomplish this week? So I've listed the objectives as well. The next thing that I list is the required readings for this week. Although all of this information is available in the course syllabus, I've listed it once again in each week. So you know exactly what required readings are, are required for this particular week. After I list that, I list our discussion board. Because this is an online course, we do a lot of discussion board. This is where the students can interact with each other. So Blackboard has a, a link that will take them directly to the discussion board. But instead of just having the discussion board tab at the side, inside of this weekly folder, I have a link to directly to that discussion board. Again, making it easy for students to be able to navigate the Blackboard environment. If there's an assignment for that week, for instance, in week one, I have assignments as well as a discussion board. The assignment is very simple. I'll talk about it a little bit more as we go forward. But it's asking students to identify their, um, their, learning, their learning method. Which way do they learn best? Are they a visual learner? Um, are they, do they like to more read? Do they like pictures? And that's more of a self-assessment for them. So they know how, how, how they learn best, and then I know how they learn best. That way I can incorporate different things into the course to, to cater to them. And the final thing that I have here is a supplemental activity. And I'll discuss that again as we go forward as well. Sometimes there, there's some course material that students just don't get from the readings. They'll do the readings, they do the discussion board, but there's some parts of it that they just don't grasp. For example, in this course, Nursing 300, um, we talk a lot about some abstract, um, some abstract concepts. So sometimes students don't really grasp it. What I'll do is I'll have a supplementary optional activity for students to do that sort of reinforces that material. Again, it's completely optional. Students don't have to do it. But if they find themselves struggling with the material, they found it helpful to be able to access those supplementary activities. And you would be surprised how many students actually do it. Even though it's extra work, they actually do go and do it if it's, if it's a particularly difficult concept to, to grasp. On this slide, I just go into a little bit more detail as to what's included in that weekly content. Blackboard is very, very uh, insistent that objectives and goals are made clear to students. We want to make sure that students know exactly, know exactly what they have to do to accomplish the goals for that week. So this slide goes into that some more. The objectives. It, this discusses the required readings. And if, if at all possible, I try to put links. So for example, one of the required readings this week is to read the course syllabus. Now, the course syllabus is found in another section that says syllabus and guides, but since it's an assigned reading and it's easy to link to, I put a link here so that students can easily download that, that syllabus. Uh, again, another part of this week's activity has another link. Anything, and we talk about the Lehman nursing philosophy, something that I think the students should be well aware of. Again, I put a link there. So anytime that you have something that um, the students can link to or that you can put a link to in your course, I would definitely suggest doing that because it's, it makes it easier for the students. It makes it easier than saying, please go to this section of Blackboard and access this document. If you can link directly to it, why not do that? This is an example of the assignment that I gave my students the first week, and it's just determining your learning style. So the students, again, will know how they learn best, and I know how they learn best. They found this activity very, very helpful. And then this is another example of the supplemental resource that I, that I mentioned to, to you earlier. 
this activity was actually quite fun for the students. It was week one, right? There was really no content to that I really had to go over. There was nothing difficult. But this was sort of a, a, a learning style activity that kind of compared you to an animal and you pick the animal that you, that you relate mostly to. So it was kind of more of a fun activity. So I try to throw those things in there too, especially if that week's content is not very difficult. Try to get something in there that engages them a little bit. Which brings us to learner engagement. What Blackboard means by learner engagement is guidance for your students. You want to make sure, again, as I said previously, you want to make sure your students know um, what the objectives are that they have to accomplish. I want my students to do excellent in my course. My students want to do excellent in my course. So I want to let them know exactly what I expect from them um, during each assignment. So one way that's great to do that is through the use of rubrics. So I'll tell my students, this is what you have to do to get 100. You have to do this, 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 and excellent. This is the excellent category. Nobody wants to be in the unsatisfactory category. Nobody even wants to be in the satisfactory category. They want to be in that excellent category. So now they'd look through each of the elements of that excellent category and see, am I meeting the objectives to do well in this section? Blackboard has an excellent rubric, um, rubric tool so that you can create these rubrics within Blackboard. And this is exactly what I've done here so that students know exactly what they're being graded on. Even if the learning management system that you use does not have a rubric tool built into it, you can still create your own rubrics. I have my rubrics on a Word document that I post on Blackboard so that students can download it as well. This makes it a little bit more easier because when it's built into the learning management system, now as soon as I open an assignment for my students, the rubric is available right next to it. So I can grade it and students can see exactly how much points they have got from each category right next to their assignment. And so they, can, they don't have questions. Well, why did I lose points for this? No, you got into the excellent category, but you may have lost a couple points if your discussion was not clear. So again, it helps students to know exactly what I have to do to accomplish my goals for this week. I found this to be very helpful with grading papers and grading discussion boards especially. Because before, when I used to grade discussion boards, it was almost like it was, almost like it was hard to base everybody on one standard without using a rubric. But now that I have a rubric, everybody is graded against the same standard and everybody understands why they got the grade that they got. So if you guys don't use rubrics currently, I would definitely encourage you to use a rubric and make that rubric available to your students so they know exactly how they're being graded. Another part of learner engagement, as I said, learner engagement is really focused on guidance for your students. Blackboard has a wonderful calendar tool that shows a student exactly what's due this week, when is it due, and it's, it's easy for students to navigate. It shows up as soon as they open the Blackboard, that home page will show them exactly what to do this week and um, when it's due and what time. Especially for an online course, I found this very important. Students kind of lose track of time a lot, and they think they have time to do the assignments, but they're really running out of time. It's letting them know right up front, oh, tomorrow this is due, that helps them to plan, their, to plan their day, to plan their week. So I found the calendar to be very helpful as well. Okay, so technology use. Technology, we all know, it's up and coming. Everybody is in technology. There's a new piece of technology coming out every single day. Why not take advantage of it? There are so many things that we can use to help us as we teach as, as instructors. So Blackboard also encourages this. They also encourage us to use technology that is either low cost or no cost. So something that we use a lot at Lehman, or that I use in this online course, is the use of video. It's free, students absolutely love it, and it's more or less easy to use. So what I've done here in this video is, this is the example that I, I, I told you guys earlier about a week before the course. I send out an, an email that just gives them an overview of the course. I also do that in video format. So the same thing that's in the, the email, I do in a video. I like it uh, in the introductory because 
students don't know what I look like. This is an online course. It helps them to know what your instructor looks like, what they sound like. They get an idea of your personality, your, your, your character. Um, so I just wanted to show you a video that I made. I have absolutely no experience making videos. This was made for free on YouTube. I didn't give myself something, a, a script to read from. It just, it just came off the bat. I kind of find that students find that um, they like that also because you're kind of you're not really putting on ears. You're just being yourself in front of them. So it's definitely not the perfect <laughs> video in the world, but. Uh, I hope you'd appreciate it anyway. I'm just going to play just a minute of it so that you can get an idea of, um, of what a, a video on YouTube might look like. with any technology use you have some, some difficulties definitely I would encourage everybody give yourself some some time some space and the students really do understand uh, the the difficulties with technology as well did you want to ask a question really quickly yes yes um, so both um, Blackboard has it built in that you can access YouTube um, directly in the learning management system. So I did it directly in Blackboard. Um, what I did was I have the link available to the students, but Blackboard also has it that you can upload a video directly in Blackboard so students don't actually have to leave the page. If they, if they press on that link, it will open directly inside Blackboard for them as well. Okay, let's try this again. Welcome to Nursing 300, Nursing as a Human Science. My name is Miss Nurse, or you may call me Professor Nurse. For most of you, this is your first nursing course at Leaning College, and I would like to take this time to welcome you and congratulate you on your acceptance to the nursing program. The next couple of years will take you on a journey to obtaining your bachelor's degree in nursing. Nursing is a field that is very exciting, with many opportunities, and I wish you all the best and great success in this course and this program. In this introductory note, I'll give you a brief overview of this course, my expectations for this course, as well as some general information about online education that you should be aware of. So for the course description, this, is, this course will present you with a historical, philosophical, and theoretical foundation of nursing and selected topics related to the intersubjective nature of professional nursing and its enough. moral, ethical, and legal dimension. The only prerequisite is admission to the nursing I think many people feel a little apprehensive also seeing themselves on video. I'm the same way, so I'm not particularly a fan of how the video came out. But you know what, I put it out there anyway, so I hope that the, and the students really, really appreciated it. I'd walk around the school and people say, hey, you're a professor nurse. So it made me feel good, even though I, I said, oh my gosh, this video came out so, sometimes you don't realize the way that you look and sound until you actually see it but I'm glad I did it anyway. <laughs> it's true. It's true. You want to, I, I want to bring across the idea that I'm approachable, fun, this can be fun, 
But I also want to make sure the students know this is serious. This is a serious course that you have to put work into. Uh, so thank you so much. So before I go to the next portion, Ms. Cadet will take over. I'm gonna, we're going to do another poll question. So everybody get your cell phones. You're going to be texting the answer to the same number that you just texted before, OK? This time, the question is, which element of an online course would you enjoy creating the most? Developing a course layout, designing course rubrics, creating course videos, creating supplemental assignments, or all of the above? Okay, so this time the options are a little bit simpler. We're simply going to respond A, B, C, D, or E. So if you, if you would enjoy creating a course outline, you can simply text A. If you, if you enjoy um, designing course rubrics, you can select B. Creating a course video is C, and creating supplemental assignments is D. If you would enjoy creating any of the above, you can select E. Is everybody texting? Doesn't seem to want to. Yeah. Uh, the number is, this, I, I believe the number is the same. It's 1747-444-3548. Everybody has that number? This is that fun technology use that we were discussing before. Huh? Yeah? one person got through. <laughs> okay, it appears the poll is giving us a little bit of difficulty. So how about we do a live poll now that I have you guys in front of me? How many people think uh, developing a course design might be very enjoyable? Yeah? Yeah, Cor creating a course design and layout very, very uh, important, again, as we talked about being able to access uh, your course in an easy way. How about designing course rubrics? Okay, how about creating a course video? Anybody brave to try that one out? No? Really? <laughs> right? <laughs> how about creating supplemental assignments? Not so much? And what about all of the above? Yeah, great, awesome. That's, that's the kind of response I want to see, perfect. Okay, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Professor Cadet, who's going to talk to you about interaction, collaboration, assessment, and learner support, which are also very important parts of creating your online course. And then I'll be right back up here. Hi, everybody. My name is Professor 
to that, I'm going to talk about um, communication, interaction, collaboration, and learner support. Why communication? You might ask yourself, why do I need to communicate online? This is the mean of, it is very important. This is how you're going to communicate anyway. You know, through email, right? Sending email and, um, you know, using Blackboard Collaborate. This is the only way you can really communicate with your students. Uh, <coughs> Um, interaction and collaboration. Um, in order to really create um, this course, you will need to really um, follow those steps. You will need to know how you will interact with your students. You will know. Um, you will not need to know what kind of communication strategy you will use in order to um, facilitate learning. And also, you will need um, to really know um, how to develop a community. Um, for Blackboard Collaborate, anybody ever used Blackboard Collaborate before? All right, excellent. How did you really manage through Blackboard Collaborate? Is that really was difficult for you? No? All right. Uh, how um, your student did respond to um, Collaborate? Okay. Okay, how did you use it? Why did you use it? Very good. Very good. What about those who could not really, really um, log it? What did you do? Very good. Very nice. Excellent. Um, Blackboard Collaborate is very um, nice to um, really use in your course. You can use Blackboard Collaborate for um, many purposes. Like um, you can really um, use it as office hours. Usually I use it as an office hours. And um, where students really have an opportunity to really meet me, you know, online. And also you can use it as um, a webinar. If you have any um, assignment, difficult assignment, you can also use it where the student has an opportunity to ask their instructor instead of um, really um, inserting 100 emails for the day for the same assignment, this is a great opportunity where students, um, whoever is uh, able to really log in, can really ask questions to the instructor right there. Those who, who do not have that opportunity, they can really also go back and see the recording session that you have for them. This is a great opportunity. And you can really, um, it is very simple to really incorporate Blackboard Collaborate, where you can really, um, the yellow, um, orange really um, is um, indicating where you can record the session. And also you can create the session where you see the um, um, blue arrow. And also you have to have a start date. When you're gonna start it, because you're not going to put the Blackboard Collaborate session for uh, three days, it will not be possible. You know, you're going to put it at least for maybe 30 minutes to one hour. Depends, you know, what is the need. If it's an assignment where students are going to participate and ask questions, yes, one hour really is um, a reason. And um, uh, Blackboard Collaborate gives you an option where the students not only do not need a computer to really access this, they can use their cell phone while they're cooking. They can use it. They don't need to really have a computer and cooking at the same time. They might not have that that, that here because you have to remember, online learners they are adults. Then where they can really, um, when, while you're recording this, um, they might be able to like changing a diaper, and they are listening to Professor Cadet intro, um, introducing an assignment. Then that is um, um, something that you can use, and I'm gonna show you. Um, for those that has an opportunity to really um, entering the collaborate, um, how it works. And uh, this is for the nurse. When you really create the collaborate, you will have to load the content. Um, this the um, the middle um, is, um, in the middle. You will have to really load your content. The content has to be loaded in um, into a call. And where you see um, um, Natasha nurse. That's where the instructor, the student will see the instructor. And also the participant, where you see the arrow with the participant, that's where the participant um, will start entering and chat and then really asking questions.
All right. Um, another way to really um, uh, create interaction and collaboration is to create group. Anybody ever create any group uh, assignment online? Very good. Because uh, why? Why? What is the purpose of creating group assignment? What is the purpose of doing this? There we go, excellent. Because um, what really, as um, adult learner, you have to really give them a way to communicate. Communication is really important. And learning from each other. And um, sometimes I divided my students into three to four um, uh, students, and each group has a different assignment where they communicate inside of their own group. Where you see um, the, uh, the group task, they will have a different task. The group discussion board, will be themselves only can see their discussion board and also um, the group members you can see this this was um, this group has only three students where they will really communicate and collaborate between them but group a will not see what group b is doing group b will not see what group c is doing now what about announcement why announcement why incorporate announcement in your um online learning Anybody can answer that question? Why announcement? Come on, come on, guys. Why announcement? Thank you. Deadlines. Because of, you know, deadlines is really important. How can you really uh, effectively be a, um, an instructor not really um, sending reminders? You know, if you don't send reminders, I guarantee you, you will have only two students complete the whole course. And the next thing that you're gonna pull your hair and um, you're gonna start really crying out and how can I grade those students because there is no grade because they all have the zero. Because only two people really access all the content, really weekly assignments, follow everything, but the rest, they are not interested. All right, then really important announcement. You send announcement every weekly. Weekly, you send announcement. Weekly. And um, lack of assignment also. Um, assessment. And um, self-assessment. What is self-assessment? What is self-assessment, guys? What is self-assessment? What is that? Huh? What is self-assessment? How can you incorporate self-assessment in your course? Why is it so important, guys? Exactly. 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 Self-confidence. Exactly. One of the uh, um, self-assessment tools that I use a lot is the, um, the tools of online learning. This is a self-assessment tool that you must incorporate. It is a great tool, Tools for Online Learning, T-O-L-L-T-O-O-L-S, the Tools for Online Learning. This is a tool that right from the start, that the student has a, um, a way to self-assess. I am ready um, for, for online learning. Is that the right online environment for me? You know, they will be able to really assess themselves to know if they are ready for this kind of uh, learning or All right. Uh, learner expectation is very important. And um, you, have, um, you have to really to create that and uh, to um, uh, give them an opportunity to understand what is expected from them to really, um, um, uh, to really achieve um, all those goals and objectives that you assign, um, you create for this course. And uh, the learner expectations, um, one of the uh, things that um, because if you do not, you know, in advance and tell um, the students, okay, this is what is expected for APA format, then the, pay, the student can really give you anything that he or she wants. If you, if, if in advance you said that I need three, four references for each dis discussion, and I need you to really um, post your discussion on um, on Wednesday before midnight, 
and um, the second discussion is supposed to be um, uh, posted on Friday before midnight. And also, you must really respond to two learners in the course room by Sunday. All those are learner expectations. This is what it is, it is expected for you to really do if you are in the uh, What about instructor expectation? Why do instructor expectation is really important? What do you think? What about the instructor expectation? Why, why this is so important? Why you yourself, you have to really tell the learners, this is my expected, this is what you expected for me as your instructor. Why? Why it is so important for you to say this is this is what you know I'm there for? What do you think? Exactly. What is your role and your classroom? What is your role and responsibilities? Because they should not really think that you are the IT department. If their computer crash, they have to call you. You understand what I mean? Because the IT department is the IT department. You know, as an instructor, yes, we do all, but at the same time, when the computer crash, it's not me. I am here for this, that, that, that. You have to really be clear with the expectations that um, you have. Um, this is um, the self-assessment tool that Professor Nurse used to the Wittenberg self-esteem scale. The other one that I was uh, talking was um, the tools all around. Support. Learner support is um, very important. And um, the learner support, we have feedback, we have the software that we say we're going to use, accommodation, disability, and also we have the And also we have Alright. And um, this is a um, video tool of Blackboard and the interest and the orientation that we have that And the supportive software, you have to really, um, really, um, those are the supportive software that you can use for Blackboard. And um, Firefox is one, Internet Explorer is another one, and Internet Service is the Blackboard Internet, high speed internet, additional software that can be used. Those are the software, typical software that we're gonna, um, the learner will need in order to do that. And instructor information, um, you have to really give um, the student the opportunity to really communicate with you. If they really have any questions, if they want to really talk to you, then um, you have to really have um, um, your contact number so that they can really um, contact you. And also you have to really introduce yourself as well. that really um, this for so the human has is on the new college department home the philosophy of the nursing department, the mission of the nursing department, and also the library. The library is really important because this is the, the learner's support. If you're asking that student to really um, create all those uh, discussion with APA format, you have to really give them um, um, a way, um, like some, um, some place to really go and then pull some articles because you are requesting that they use research articles, you are re requesting that they use the APA format. Then uh, this is uh, an opportunity for the learners to really get all the resources. And the um, videos. Um, um, some some um, technical accessibility, some students, they might, they, um, they might need really, uh, to access Blackboard, they will um, access some videos. But once you're really gonna put the videos, make the link really accessible. Some videos, they're not really accessible when you really you copy a video link and then the next thing you see that the link is not um, really accessible. Make sure that the link is accessible for the student as well as if you can get the video and load the video yourself on Blackboard, that would be a good uh, And a learner support with a learning disability, mobility impairment, and some clinical health conditions, 
um, those who have um, some um, part of hearing, those that, that um, who are um, blind and who are impairment, and um, some accommodation also when you are really creating your course, you have to really um, look over that. And also when you put the Lumen College Student Disability Services, or like where the student can really um, go and Okay, so this is really the last part of the presentation, and uh, it's one of the parts that I find to be very, very important, and it's about feedback. Uh, I never really did feedback with my students before because, as most schools do, at least I think most schools do, is at the end of the course, they send out a course evaluation, and you get to evaluate your, your instructor. Do most other places do that same thing? Yes. Um, <clears throat> so I usually didn't do that because I figured the, the college is going to do that anyway. But with this course, now that I put all these different bells and whistles on it now with this Blackboard rubric, I said, I wonder how it's working for my students. I wonder if they have any feedback for me. So I instituted a, a course evaluation. What Professor Cadet also let me know is that it's good for you to do this midterm and at the end of the course because if you only do it at the end of the course the students might say why am I doing this now this isn't going to benefit me this isn't going to help me it'll help me as the instructor it's wonderful for me but the student is like well all the things that I wish were in the course now it's the end of the course so what difference does it make so I started doing a midterm evaluation and it was so beneficial if you guys don't do this now I would definitely suggest trying to incorporate this so what I did was look at a few evaluations, the ones that the, the school does, uh, the ones that some other schools do, and then just some things that I was interested in knowing about. For instance, um, <clears throat> the way that I outlined the course, I was wondering, do students find that helpful? Um, the use of videos, do they find that helpful? I used to do the office hours doing Blackboard Collaborate. Professor Cadet spoke to you about Blackboard Collaborate and using it as, in as a synchronous session. Uh, I used it a lot doing office hours. I did every week, I did virtual office hours. And I thought it was a little unfair for me to do physical office hours in the school. And my online students, if they, they were mostly in New York. But let's say they were in California or Minnesota or, some, or Puerto Rico. And they can't come to my physical office hours. <coughs> so I used Blackboard Collaborate to do office hours every week. And I was wondering, you know, do students find that helpful? I wanted some feedback on that. So when I did this midterm assessment, I found out great, great, great information. First of all, the students really loved the videos. They loved having videos. And they really wanted to see videos of me more than just linking them to videos on YouTube. They liked that. So what I started to do was uh, started to incorporate a little bit more video. I started to record my Blackboard Collaborate sessions and post those videos for the students who couldn't come to the office hours every week, come to the office hours every week. Also, some students, a lot of, because I was teaching RN students, many of them worked in different schedules, so they couldn't come to the, the weekly office hours that I set on a specific day of the week. So I started alternating it. I used to do it on Thursday evenings, and then I would alternate between Thursday and Saturday so to make it a little bit more flexible for students. But again, I wouldn't have had that information if I didn't do this at the midterm instead of at the final. Uh, some other things I found out that they found very helpful was there, were those announcements. As Professor Cadet said, it was great to have those reminders. Uh, also, Blackboard has an option where every time you post an announcement, it can go out as an email also. So I always did announcement and sent it out in as, email, as an email as well. So again, if you're not using uh, your own evaluations in your course, I would definitely encourage you to think about doing that because you get really valuable information from your students. And if you could do it at midterm, it'd be great because then you can incorporate some of that feedback throughout the rest of your course so that your students do get the benefit of that as well. Okay, this is the end of the presentation. We have one more survey poll. Hopefully it will work well for us. question this time is, which element could you incorporate into your online course? And I really want you to think about uh, what you really think you might be able to do. 
It's great to say all of the above, but if you don't think you might be able to do all of the above, at least you can focus on one or two. Um, we really want you to be able to leave from this presentation thinking about how you might incorporate some of these elements into your own, your own course. And the things that you don't think you would be able to incorporate, at least you know uh, this is something that you might aspire to sometime in the future. So let me see if I can get this working. see if this works. If not, we'll do it again as a group. So uh, you can text to the same number. Oh, I see what the complication was. Um, because this is a new poll, you do have to activate yourself into the poll. So first you have to text Natasha Nurse 502 to that same number and then you can, then you can uh, text your answer. Isn't it great when we learn technology together as a group? Okay, so first everybody, you text Natasha Nurse 502 to the same number that you've been texting to, and then you can submit your vote. A for virtual office hours, B for multiple assignments, C for creating an orientation to an online course, D is creating a midterm and final course evaluation, and E is all of the above. <coughs> Just as a mention for letter B, uh, what I did a lot in my discussion boards was I gave options for assignments. So it wasn't just one assignment. I gave them several options. So for example, um, they could either do their reading and then post uh, a summary of their reading or, or answer a couple questions. Or maybe they wanted to create a picture. Or maybe they wanted to do something like a blog entry. So again, like we did earlier with the different learning styles, I wanted to give them different options for different assignments. So that's what um, B means about creating multiple assignments that could kind of cater to each student individually. So it looks like it's working a little bit better for us. I do apologize for the mishap earlier. And again, the people who are watching by internet, you're definitely welcome to participate in this poll as well. So I'll give a couple more minutes. Well, a couple more seconds. Is everybody getting along better with this one? It looks like maybe some people are still having some difficulty. I do apologize for that. Um, but it looks like um, people are really, oh, here we go. It looks like um, virtual office hours seems like a good idea to a lot of people. I'm excited to see that. I think that's, that's a great service to our online students who aren't able to attend physical office hours. They shouldn't be at a disadvantage. So I think office hours, if you were able to incorporate that, especially using something like Blackboard Collaborate, that would be wonderful. And again, remember to record your sessions so that your students who can't participate are able to access that video as well. Uh, the next popular one seems to be the midterm and final evaluation and uh, all of the above, of course. And creating an orientation to Blackboard, absolutely. Creating an orientation, I think, is invaluable because, you know, at the beginning of a course or the beginning of a class, you're so pumped up, at least I was, well, that's just because I really enjoy school. But students are very excited and they're, they're ready to get involved in the course. So grabbing them right at the beginning with that orientation and that tour, helping them to start off on the right foot, I think is, is also very invaluable. So I would definitely encourage that. 
Uh, so now we're at the end of uh, our presentation. I think primarily what we want is for you guys to take some of this information, incorporate the things that you're not currently doing into your current practice as well. And of course, we're going to have a question and answer session. So if you have anything that you would like for us to elaborate on, feel free to ask. Thank you so much, you guys, for your attention and for participating with us and being such a wonderful audience. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you, Professor, Nurse, and Cadet. We will conclude uh, with a question and answer session. Please talk through the microphones. Um, it's going to be in the back. Um, the ladies will help with the microphone. So through the internet, they can hear your questions um, as well. Um, and to, when you use the microphone, you want to ask a question or make a comment, please introduce yourself. Say where you're from, the institution you represent and to whom you're going to address the question to. Um, again, participants watching this event through the internet can also participate by sending their question via email to info at pets.org. So let's start. Um, to our friends that are shy speaking in English, you could ask your question in Spanish. I know you all understand what went on, but I know some of them are shy to speak English talking about my personal group that's here. Um, you can ask it in Spanish, and I will do my best to translate, because I don't want you to miss out any questions you may have. OK? I'm the, the first uh, volunteer to ask a couple of questions. Uh, my name is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, my name is Alfredo Calderon, and uh, I guess some of you from here from Puerto Rico know me. I'm an uh, independent consultant in uh, distance education, uh, instructional designer, and, instruc uh, and other things that I do. But my, my questions, I have a couple of questions, uh, and neither one of you can answer them. Uh, the first question is regarding with something that uh, Professor Nurse mentioned of an, a uh, learning style instrument that you have. Was that developed in-house, or is it a commercial instrument, or what is it? Sure. Um, there's a tool. It's called a VARC tool, V-A-R-K. It's not something that we developed at Lehman. It's something that is publicly available, and uh, I've heard really, really great feedback on, and that's the tool that, that I typically use. Have you heard of that tool also? Yes. Actually, yes. that's something that I recommend to everybody to Yes. Use. So we're on the same page. Uh, the other question that I have is regarding with the, the the settings that the users have to have in their computers in order to access the resources and, and Blackboard in, in your case, uh, but in general. Now, the thing is, do you have a document that every student receives or do you have a plugin that they can access through uh, their computers to see if their setup is important to, to the platform? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, what we have is uh, all students have access to a Blackboard help page, and that's really where this information is. And the Blackboard help page lists all of the uh, different internet browsers, the computer system uh, requirements that, that are needed to be able to use Blackboard. We have a, uh, a person who works in the, in the IT department who sends out things like um, a, a booklet for tips for online learners, and that information is in there. That's a great question because I don't know if every student uh, it receives this document uh, independently. I'm not sure how that's uh, distributed. Um, so what I do in the course, when I send out that email the, first, the week before course, the, before, the week before the course, I do include some of that information and I include a link to the Blackboard student user guides. Um, but that's a really, really great point and I think that uh, that information should be sent out to every, not even just online students, but to all students, because all students use Blackboard, whether they're using it for an online course or for an in-person course, all students still use Blackboard, so that's, that's uh, really great to have. I think it's, a, it's an assumption that all students are using the most up-to-date computers, so it's not necessary but it's so necessary, especially with the different browsers that we've used. Many students have Mac computers, and Safari has given a lot of difficulty with Blackboard. So I think having that, that uh, recommended um, 
software and hardware it should be given out to every student. So that's a really great point you make. Uh, I have two more questions. <laughs> so I'm going to keep on. I mean, if you will allow me to do it. Uh, my, my third question is regarding that since nowadays mo most students have mobile devices, uh, does the way you've designed your course enables the students to access it through their mobile devices uh, with difficulty or any difficulty at all? Not, not really, because um, for my experience, um, everybody, they, they, because in New York, you have um, um, internet access everywhere, and where people can use it anywhere, everywhere. Even in Cyber Cafe, where you go, you sit down in the library, um, Lehman College Library, they never really had problem. And um, even uh, teaching my course um, at the campus, everybody has their iPad or computer. They don't really never say that they have problem accessing Blackboard, you know, outside of the campus or um, at home. Also, I just wanted to add, um, Blackboard has an app. Everybody has an app. Uh, so it, is, it does cater to mobile devices like cell phones and iPads. However, I always tell my students, don't, I do weekly quizzes with my students just to make sure that they're getting the, the, con the content well. I tell them, don't do your quizzes on a cell phone or an iPad. And don't, um, it's, it's exams and um, submitting assignments. A lot of my assignments, I ask them to submit on SafeAssign. Uh, so it's sort of like sending an attachment. I tell them, don't submit assignments and don't do quizzes on a cell phone or an iPad. Something happens and, oh, I did it, but it's not there. I always tell them use uh, either a laptop or a desktop computer for those things. However, the, the app, the Blackboard app and the cell phone and iPad is really great for like the discussion boards. They can answer those on their cell phones and their iPads because I think the app works very well for those things. Uh, I don't think it's quite there yet when it comes to quizzes and um, submitting assignments like attachments and things like that. So just to be on the safe side, I tell them not to do that, even though I think Blackboard does support it. It might be really difficult sometimes if you have like a discussion to really um, um, answering, um, like posting your discussion as a student, because I always really advise them not to really use the, um, their, their phone to really um, cop a, um, re responding to their post. Because what will happen um, if I ask uh, to respond to, to other learners and I ask to, to really use um, uh, some uh, resources to cite any authors from um, any um, literature, um, that student will not be able to really um, um, respond to the learners. Then um, sometimes it might be really be difficult really to use your, um, your phone to really um, respond to a discussion. Sure, sure. Uh, my last question is regarding the, uh, when you use a Blackboard Collaborate uh, to deliver uh, uh, content or uh, do a webinar, uh, what has been your experience in, in terms of the length of the webinar? Are the, the students engaged uh, if it's a long webinar or do you do shorter uh, webinars in order to keep students engaged and follow up with some sort of assignment? Usually, this is what we do um, at Lehman College. We um, we go with like a, a 30 minutes to one hour um, in terms of like a, like a short webinar. Where if you have like an assignment, difficult assignment, like um, sometimes it's group assignment. Because sometimes what we see is some of the students they have some problem really collaborate between them, and they're always fighting over one little assignment where um, nobody wants to do it, and they're complaining a lot. Um, what I usually do is um, let them really um, communicate, um, come uh, to the Blackboard Collaborate, ask questions, and guide them. But the webinar is really very short. And I think like um, um, length, like when, if you're going to put like more time, it depends on the instructor. For myself, I really recommend to really put like one, well, 30 minutes to one hour if you're going to really um, do a webinar to engage the student. I also wanted to add to that also. Uh, when I use Blackboard Collaborate in my course, I try to use it for things that uh, the students have to respond to. So, for example, the first one I did was just to show them how to use Blackboard Collaborate. So I'll do one slide or two slides, and then I'll ask a question that they have to respond to. One slide, two slides, and then a question that they have to respond to. I don't typically do it to present material, because I found that I can just present the, the material in like a video. 
do screenshots, and they can watch this to, to learn content. I try not to use Blackboard Collaborate to just deliver content because it sort of defeats the purpose of that uh, interaction, and that's something that I can do without using Blackboard Collaborate. I try to use Blackboard Collaborate in an instance where I want the students to answer me, to give me some, some feedback. Um, my, my office hours usually last for an hour, and I invite the students to come in and ask questions. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll prepare something in advance, very short, maybe 15, 20 minutes, and then I'll use the rest of the time just for students to do back and forth questions. So I typically don't use it to deliver content. Anyone else has any questions? So you guys think I have. Oh, OK, ma'am. Yes, you mentioned the self-assessment, uh, and I would also like to know if it is uh, an online tool or if, it's, if you've made it in uh, Lima. The self-assessment, currently I'm, I'm, I'm doing my doctorate. Um, the tools, um, um, tools of online learning is one of the self-assessment I'm using. This is a great tool. I, um, I will advise everybody to really look over that tool. Um, I didn't create that tool. It is created by Kerr, which is one of the um, uh, great, great um, um, professor that um, they create that. And I did ask permission to really use um, um, his tool for my dissertation. Um, if you want the link, I can always send the link um, to um, heads, then you can really um, look over this tool yourself. And it has good validity and reliability, and um, you can really look um, um, over it. Well, well, you guys think I have one. Um, actually, this will be for um, either Professor Nurse or Professor Cadet. Can you share with us any uh, barriers or a pitfall that you encountered when you were setting up your course for the first time? Um, because there are people in the room that are in the process of initiating distance education. And what was that one of the biggest wall that you hit that you could share your experience with us? Sure, I have many. <laughs> um, it was very, uh, I'll say, frustrating in the beginning because I have an idea in my head of what I want the course outline to look like. And then as I started it, I had to, to kind of go backwards. The way, the way that um, the course outline is set up in Blackboard, like you can create these folders, and then inside the folder you put something, and then inside of that you can put something. And then there, if I wanted to delete that outside folder, I have to delete everything that's inside of it. So I, I ended up spending a lot of time um, creating something and deleting it and then creating it and deleting it. So uh, I would definitely recommend having an idea of exactly how you want uh, how you want your, your outline to look so that you don't um, waste that time. Um, one, of the, one of the biggest things I had trouble with that Professor Cadet helped me with a lot was setting up those weekly, the weekly outline. So like I, you guys saw earlier, it said week one, week two, week three, week four. That was a little bit um, difficult for me. Blackboard has so many options of how you can lay out your course. Uh, and it was, a, it was a little bit confusing to know which one was the best one to choose. So that was a little bit hard. Uh, the other thing was the Blackboard Collaborate. Since I hadn't used it before, getting started with it was a little complicated. Because I set up weekly virtual office hours, I had them all set up from the beginning of the, the, the course. So um, setting the dates for them and uh, preparing that in advance, I found a little bit um, tedious as well. So I think it's like with everything, when you start it for the first time, it's a little bit complicated. As you start to get more comfortable with it, it comes much, much more easier. What I was um, surprised to see was that one of the easiest things was creating the video, which was one of the things I was the most apprehensive about. And it ended up being very, very easy. Uh, the other thing is creating content for the students that's engaging trying to create different types of videos. There's so many different resources. There's Prezi, which is wonderful for um, presenting uh, content to students. Recording it, posting it, those are things that came a little bit easier. The things that I thought would have been easy, like setting up the outline, setting up the shells for each week, 
those were the things that, that ended up being the most tedious for me. Uh, so I would think to, to avoid that, I would definitely try to do that in conjunction with whoever your Blackboard IT person is, but also having an idea of exactly what do you want in each folder because it's going to be, if you have to delete that folder, it deletes everything that's inside of that folder also. And uh, Professor Cadet was very helpful to me trying to set that up in advance. So I set everything up empty, set up all my folders, everything was empty, and then I started including things inside of it. She hates it. She can tell you the truth. She hates it. <laughs> but to tell you the truth, it was very difficult. Um, my, um, the biggest barriers is to put the whole setting together. All the folders. This is, um, um, I can say the framework. This is what, this is the course. For you to really put, to organize it, that was the most difficult. Um, as a mother, a wife, a student, a professor, it was not easy for me to really create that framework, to really build it. Because um, sometimes me and her, we are on the phone 12 a.m. in the morning while we're gonna teach the next day, trying to put the folders. Because putting 15 folders, weekly folders, and then on top of that, you have to have 15 um, folders again for um, all those OET, um, what is, uh, the course outline. And it was not easy. We have to really create it, and it takes a long time to really have it the way you want it. That was the that was the, the problem. But really, we succeed with that. Any other questions? I'm going to I'm going to ask you another question since you you just mentioned uh, some of the barriers you had. Uh, did you? have any assistance bes besides you two working on the course with the content and the uh, different tools that you are going to integrate within the, the course um as as an i i before um i um start with lehman college i was with excelsior college and where um this is where i've been introduced um with blackboard and I had a chance to really get that from Excelsior College, the, the um, training that I get from there, and um, being an instructor at Lehman College and um, really use that to really uh, build the course. Um, any other tools that you said um, we use? We use many tools in terms of, are you talking about like um, for the learners or for the learners? Yes, we do use a lot of uh, tools. As uh, Professor um, Nurse said, uh, we use Prezi. We use um, a, a, um, Animoto. We use a lot of tools, a lot of um, little software that they have to really um, um, use in order to um, participate in the course. Many, many of them. If you are interested, I can really send you a link where you can really access some of the tools. I know for sure that your course may have a lot to do. I also wanted to add to that, uh, Lehman College as a whole has really great resources. Actually, CUNY as a whole has really great resources. They do several types of workshops. They have online workshops, how to incorporate video into your online course, how to um, use Blackboard Collaborate. They have lots of different resources that they run throughout the course, the school semester. So you as an instructor can enroll in these courses and you can learn how to use a lot of these tools. So I, I did do a few of those little workshops which I thought was invaluable. Also, the Lehman College Department of Nursing had really great resources. Uh, we're very committed to having our courses consistent from course to course. So of course, I'm not the only person teaching Nursing 300. Many, many professors are, some face-to-face, -face, some online. So all of the course content has to be consistent. All of it has to be the same. It's the same course. Everybody's learning the same material. So as far as the content, it is the same for all, for all courses. However, as far as these weekly discussions, these, um, the discussion boards, um, the way that I do those things, some of that could be different, but we have, for each course, there's sort of a committee. And um, we can share that information with our committee. What are we thinking about doing it for an exercise this week? What are we thinking about doing for a discussion board? And that committee was very influential also in developing some of the content um, that, that was used uh, from the week to week uh, discussion boards. So the, the school has great resources. I think if you start, if you look for these things, they start to show up. Things that you didn't even know uh, were available to you as an instructor. And uh, CUNY and Lehman had great resources for us as well. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. 
have a question? Um, I have another one. Thank <laughs> God. Um, I don't know if you ever had the opportunity to teach face to face and also online. It seems um, in your presentation that you are really focused in that student engagement. Um, do you think also you will carry that now to the classroom that you had to do face to face? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's so much. I don't know. Maybe we don't we don't think about it so much when we're doing face to face class because it's all engagement. It's easy for me to see a student maybe that's falling asleep or or something, and I can I can reach out to that student or I can pose a question. Uh, the one of the easiest ways is to pose a question so that people actually have to think and and respond to you so that it's not all passive learning. In an online environment, it's a little bit harder to do that. So if I present content and it's read this and then do this discussion board, I don't know that this student is, very, is really engaged. That's one of the reasons why I try to do the multiple assignments in the online environment. That way students have to consciously think about, okay, which one do I want to do? Which one uh, is better fit for me? And that gave me an idea that they're engaged. Uh, I do find, though, that if and I do teach on face-to-face -face as well. And I think that now that I've learned so many resources that are available online, they're wonderful to bring into the classroom. Like doing something like this, even though it gave me a little bit of trouble today. It's great to use in a face-to-face a, a -face -face classroom. Uh, even some of the videos that I use online, I think students would love to see some of those things in a face-to-face -face classroom as well. So there's so many things that could go either way. And I think it's made me more in tuned, more focused on that engagement, whether I'm online or whether it's face to face. I think it's made me be more attentive to my students and make sure that they are engaged, make sure that I am using different ways of reaching out to them, that I'm not just lecturing, I'm not just speaking to them, spitting information out at them, but making sure that they're engaged, they understand what I'm saying, and they have an opinion about it, if, if I asked. Um, so I think it's been great for that. I use that a lot which is the a lack of putting questions um, for the nurse practitioners, where um, when you really have like questions like that, you, put, you let the students really engage um, um, in um, what you are teaching them. And um, when you look at it, like lecturing, um, um, of course, it can be very um, boring. When the students sitting and listening to you, um, they might think like, what I'm gonna wear tomorrow or what I'm gonna cook today. You know, instead of really um, following um, what you're saying. But if you really make the student, uh, give the, them an opportunity to really, um, you give them a question to really think through the questions, to answer through the questions. That's what we did today. We really used the pool so that everybody has an opportunity to really participate. This is what we call engagement. Any other questions? I think we still have time. Online. Great question. Leaving college has uh, it's it's a face-to-face -face program, but many of the courses are available online. Because in what? September of uh, yeah, in the fall of 2015, this year, Lehman College will be launching a completely online RN to BSN program. That program is completely online. However. Many students in the face-to-face -face program, or the traditional program, can still take online courses. We have lots of um, courses available online. But we will be starting an exclusively online program later on in this year. Because um, I just want to know if the students are preferring the online courses or they still want to stay uh, on face-to-face -face courses. Yeah, it's, 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 it's up to each student. The RN students, the students who are already RNs and are trying to obtain their BSN, their bachelors, they're very interested in online courses because it fits well into their schedules. A lot of them are already working, so that fits great for them, the flexibility. They love that. So we have many, many courses for our RN students are available online. Um, some of the, the traditional students, it's a little bit more difficult with the online courses because those students have to, to go to clinical. You know, there, there's no online option for that. You have to do those things. So many of their courses, many of the traditional, we call them generic students, their courses um, are face-to-face. -face. 
However, there are some online options for those students as well. So we found that the, the RN to BSN students prefer a lot of online courses, and many of the traditional students, they do our face-to-face -face courses, but we do have many online options. It's a big trend now, right? Many, many places are transitioning to online courses. So we found that courses that we've always traditionally had face-to-face, -face we're trying to move online as well. So I think soon we're going to have many, many, many more options for online courses. Uh, which is the average um, age of your students? Um, let's say 20s to um, maybe 50s to 60s. Um, what I was going to mention as you're asking, you know, if the students really respond well, yes. I can tell you, uh, since I start with Lehman College, um, I'm teaching online. Um, I always have 23, 24 students in my course for the 408. 408. And um, I've been teaching that nonstop. I mean, really summer, even if I am in Hawaii and the computer next to me answering, you know, um, emails because that's how, like, so demanding. We have a great demand um, for students that they are NBSN students, that they have, um, um, they're working, they are m mothers like us, like, um, you know, they, they have their lives and, and so on and so forth. But uh, coming to the campus to really have, um, like, uh, taking a course, um, it will be difficult for them then um, the demand is really very high where um, non-stop, I never stop um, teaching that course, winter, summer, fall, no, you name it, I'm there. My name always there and I always have 23 students. It's not only one session and it's um, like, sometimes we have three, four sessions or four eight. Also, as far as the average age, um, a lot of the RN to BSN students, because this is, uh, I consider a second degree then, for them, they're older because they've they've done school already. They they have their RN license. They're working, so some of them might be older um, than the traditional college student. Uh, so, you know, we we think sometimes, okay, maybe they're not used to an online environment. Maybe they they wouldn't like that, but uh, they really do because again, like I said, it's flexible. They can do it any time. If 3 a.m. is the only time they have to check into this course, they can do that. And that option is not available um, in the in-person session. And that's why uh, most of my presentation, I focused on making this easy for somebody to navigate, especially somebody who has never taken an online course before, or even somebody who's not familiar with computers so much, somebody who may not know how to use a keyboard or a mouse, or they're just learning it. So being able to learn how to use a computer and learn the content that you're learning in this course can be very challenging. So we want to take away all the other things that could make it difficult. We're trying to make it so easy that anybody can use it and not just use it, but enjoy it also while they're doing it. Yes. I have uh, a question. My name is Ines Landon, Colegio Universitario de San Juan. Uh, you said it's, uh, your degree is completely online, but uh, we were wondering what, how about the laboratories, if you have laboratory experiences or simulators online, maybe? <laughs> and what about the hospital clinical experiences? How do you deal with that, with the online? Sure. Online, uh, for, program? for our traditional students, our generic students who are not registered nurses yet, their clinicals are face-to-face. -face. That, that is not one of our online programs. They have to come into the school, they have to come into the hospital, they have to do their clinical hours. For our registered nurses who are students, they're already registered nurses. They have those clinical hours logged for them already. So they don't have to do those type of clinicals per se. However, we do have a course that's a health assessment course. We want to make sure our students can do health assessments. So what we use at Lehman is a program. We have an avatar program. Uh, it's one of the new technologies that's out now. It's like a simulated hospital environment. The student can come into this environment online, ask questions to the simulated patient, and the programs now that they're coming out with would really blow you away. It's, it's amazing. It doesn't matter what question you ask this, this patient, and she'll answer it for you. You know, you can ask, how are you doing today? She's got an answer for that. Um, you can check a blood pressure and it, it'll give you that. So we, there's so much great technology out right now so that this health assessment course, this, we can assess how the students are doing their health assessments through this course because it's, it's, so, uh, it's so up to date. It's, 
it's the technology they use is really great. So that's one of the things that we use at Lehman is this avatar program for, for if we want to assess skills that students have. Because remember, it's not just those physical skills. It's a lot of the right questions to ask. Uh, and, and knowing how to communicate with a patient in, in an appropriate way, asking the right questions, but also asking it in an appropriate uh, manner. So some of that is the additional uh, technology that we use. Of course, that program, um, that program uses different types of technology. So those particular students, we do speak to in advance to let them know you need this type of computer, you have to have this type of update, and uh, make sure they get a good orientation to that program, since it's something in addition to just the regular Blackboard environment. But the traditional students do do the face-to-face, -face, have to be in a clinical, with a, in a hospital with patients. I just want to say gracias for this interesting discussion. Thank you to our speakers this morning for sharing their expertise and experiences. They were so open with us. Thank you for that. Um, the presentation and the video of this event will be uploaded at the HETS website so you could review it, share it with your colleagues. Soon you will be receiving an email with the links to both. And finally, thank you all for accepting HETS invitation to participate in this event. We hope you can benefit tremendously from the resources and the network opportunities that this event provided. And once again, gracias, thanks, and enjoy your long weekend. And we thank you guys as well. If you guys have any questions, first, you can always reach out to us through the HETSA organization. Thank you.